joining us this evening. Um, I'm really, really excited tonight uh, about what we're about to do. Uh, thanks for, for coming and participating in the front chair's front porch, which we think is becoming a pretty nice add to what we're doing, at least for the lack of being together in person, we can be together in this way and connect in lots of different ways and see what's going on in the project. So thanks for being here and taking the time to be with us today. I'm gonna to turn it over to Ed uh, right now to give us uh, a welcome and bring us in. If you're in a place where you can do that, you're not driving or anything uh, dangerous, put your feet on the floor, close your eyes and take a breath. And remember for a minute that we're on land that does not belong to us to, ex to the extent that the land I'm sitting on belongs to anyone. It belongs to the Paiute Nation and the Washoe Nation. And if you know who was on the land before you were, think about them. If you don't know, I encourage you to find out. It's a good thing to know wherever you are to honor those who came before. This is a difficult time. It's a time we could say that's crisis and it is a cliche, but nonetheless true that in that the character in Chinese for crisis is a problem and an opportunity. The combination of the characters for problem and opportunity. We have an opportunity to rewrite the script. We have an opportunity to move the world forward. And calls like this are a small, but not insignificant part of the opportunity. So thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the opportunity. And whether you say aho, ashe, amen, whatever you say, so it is said. Paul? Thanks, Ed. Thank you so much. Well, as the host chair for the evening, um, I'm pleased to um, introduce the program to you in part. And then I've asked John to take over from me to introduce even more because he's created a much bigger relationship over time. I got acquainted with the Jerry um, program, Gender Equity and Reconciliation about three years ago. Uh, and it was one of the most moving uh, weekends that I've ever been with and been through. I learned things that I had no idea that I could possibly learn. Um, about gender and how we can be more equal and how we can learn how to be more together. So uh, I have a warm spot in my heart for Cynthia um, and Will, and I'm grateful for the other uh, three of you, I think, that are here running the program uh, tonight. And I will now um, just let you know how um, important that you've been as part of my role as chair in the last year or two years almost. Uh, and bringing you more and more into the program uh, with now John Levitt. So John, I'm gonna turn it over to you who's been an active, real active part in bringing uh, you as an affiliate in more deeply to the program. John. Thanks everyone and, and uh, welcome brothers, sisters, partners and friends. Uh, it's nice to see more women on the call tonight. It's beautiful. Um, so uh, when I got another phone call, from someone that someone in the project said I had to meet and I had to experience what they had to offer, um, I put up the same resistance I often put up because I get a lot of those phone calls. And um, when I first spoke with Will Keepen and first met Cynthia Bricks and the rest of the team, Garrett and Chaya and Phil and others who are here today, um, I was blown away by the depth of the work we did uh, together um, uh, unpacking gender issues. Uh, you know, I've done 30 years of different kinds of men's and women's work, but there's something about what uh, Will Keepen's book is called Divine Duality. There's something about the divine duality of this, and particularly for men who are ready and working on their emotional literacy and on changing the world, that, that's moving to me. And so uh, I'm honored to have walked with, worked on grants with, um, had regular visits with Will, Cynthia, and others at Gender Equity and Reconciliation International, and I'm going to turn it over to them to get the program underway. Welcome, everyone. 
welcome everyone. Thank you, John and Paul and Ed for this beautiful welcome. And I just wanna say what a privilege it is to be here with the MKP community. We've had MKP men coming to our program for years. And then in the last few years, been developing a partnership with the leadership and it just feels incredibly auspicious and synergistic. Thank you. Now we went to, as Paul already did, and John just welcoming the women on the call as well. It's nice to be here with my, our sisters. And, um, and just for a little bit of overview of what we plan tonight, um, you're going to hear from me and Will and then Phil and Chaya, a little bit of our experience, a little bit about the work. And then we'll move into a, little, a small activity that Phil and I plan to uh, co-facilitate together and then just come back together with some reflections and Q&R. So um, we hope that you dive in with us for all of that, including the experiential piece. So I'd just like to start by um, quoting a beloved um, teacher of mine from childhood in the 60s. And it's apropos at this time, I think, because he is Mark, uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he said, injustice and corruption will never be transformed by keeping them hidden, but only by bringing them out into the light and confronting them with the power of love. And that really encapsulates and describes what we do in the Gender Equity and Reconciliation International Program. We bring people together in, of all gender identities and expressions, and often many of the people identify in, as male or female. Um, and we create a safe space for people to speak truth about the often taboo and sensitive issues around gender and sexuality. And we do that without shame or blame. We do that with the intention for healing, the intention for rising not only as much in equal rights, but mutual respect and mutual reverence of one another again, bringing that back in to this realm of relationship, if you will. So I came to this work, um, I think it was 20 years ago now, and my mother came five years before me, and uh, she came back after her first program, and she said to myself and my brother and my sister-in-law, I want to gift you by sending you to this workshop, and for everything I screwed up in your life, this work will heal you. What a gift from a mom, right? <laughs> my brother and sister-in-law went right away, and they came back blown away, but it took me five years to get to the program. Different things came up, program got canceled, things like that. I came and she right, was right, I was blown away. One month to the day, um, pretty much of that workshop, I was working in a health and wellness firm in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I had been there about six months. I took this job uh, in health and wellness as a wellness counselor because I was studying with this man that I had I, I was going to work with this man that I had studied about he's world-renowned in the health and wellness field and One month of the day of that program. He, sexu he sexually propositioned me during a dinner meeting we were having and he said Cynthia I've enjoyed getting to know you now. It's time to take our relationship to a deeper more intimate sexual level I said no, and he didn't hear my no, unfortunately. He kept pressuring me throughout the week, throughout the work week, and I decided to bring it forward. And I did so with as much compassion as I could, trying to get to deeper understanding. I mean, I had just been in this gender workshop, but I had learned these skills to do that. But unfortunately, um, the corporation, he apologized actually, but the corporation was very threatened and they hired six attorneys to take me down. And it, um, what happened was I, I, this wall came up in me and I, I didn't, I, I left, I got pushed out of the organization. And when I was pushed out, I didn't trust men. I didn't like men. I didn't want to be around men. I didn't know how to be around men anymore, but I also didn't trust women. 
because the women betrayed me too. They had to, to stay in the system. They had to, to keep their jobs. And so I went through this deep place of healing and trying to figure out what the hell is going on and what's happening here. I couldn't go through life not trusting. And especially I didn't want to not trust my sisters nor my brothers. So through the process of a lot of therapy, a lot of soul searching and this work, I came into a place of deeper understanding, more compassion, and a way to channel all that had happened and transform it, like King said, into a place of this work and my, my place in it to come into deeper relationship with um, those that really are striving for healing. So I'm really happy to be with you here tonight. And um, I look forward to sharing more as we go along. So um, the great writer D.H. Lawrence said that the future of humanity will be decided not by relations between nations, but relations between men and women. And in saying this, he was really speaking to this core wound in the human family. And we have had the women's movement and we've had the men's movement and a lot of work in each of these domains. But ultimately, it's not two wounds, it's one wound with different manifestations. And so what uh, D.H. Lawrence was speaking to nowadays, of course, we would expand that to include not just men and women, but people who identify outside the gender binary and include all gender categories, expressions, and identities. But the bottom line is that the gender apartheid, in a sense, in the human family is one of the deepest wounds in our species. And so this work really sets out to try to heal this. And it started 28 years ago. Um, I'm trained as an environmental scientist. I was working on climate change mitigation back in the 80s. And in the context of that work, um, there was a lot of sexual harassment going down. And in fact, when we were just birthing the beginnings of this work, Anita Hill came out and challenged Clarence Thomas. And we thought, okay, this is our moment. We're now gonna really go into the culture with a gender reconciliation initiative. Um, didn't happen. <laughs> Took another 28 years. Um, but the work got started then, and we began to do this work within the context of initially the environmental movement, because that was my background and my professional networks. And so we originally called them gender in ecology with a byline, are there parallels between exploitation of the earth and exploitation of the feminine? And so that's how the work got started. And then in the mid nineties, uh, we were very inspired by what happened in South Africa, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and so we felt like, wow, we need this for gender. We need gender reconciliation. We need a gender truth and reconciliation commission and process. And so that's how we came across this. We, we kind of coined this term gender reconciliation and later changed it to gender equity and reconciliation. But basically through the mid nineties and late nineties, we started organizing these programs originally for environmentalists and then others started getting interested. So we broadened it out from there. In 2001, we got invited to India for the first time, 2003 to South Africa, and it's just built over time. And we've introduced this program in 11 countries now. We've got 15 more countries inviting us. So we're really now becoming a training, we've been a training organization for the last 10 years, training facilitators to really flesh this work out and grow it. Um, and I'm gonna just share a couple of slides if they are here. Um, as I speak with this next story, um, just to give you some images of the work. So uh, why don't you do the slides and I'll okay. speak. So Cynthia's just gonna flip through some of the slides just to give you a kind of a photographic montage. And I'll share one of the stories. Um, we had, just, yeah, just go for it. We had uh, in one of the workshops, in one, we, an advanced workshop, we had um, a case where a woman told a story of a really brutal rape that she had experienced. And this was in a workshop where we had, you know, maybe 30 people, roughly half women, half men. 
and I, you know, very few of the women had, women had ever heard a story told in such a way where she told the story, not as a victim, but as a witness, and really spoke to the shattering experience of being raped. And the men, uh, I guarantee you, had never heard that story, uh, because part of the male privilege is not to have to know these kinds of stories. And it took everything I could do to keep the men in the room. And afterwards, one of the young men, he's about 24, a very skilled young man, and he was shaking and trembling. And he said, I don't know how to be a man anymore. I feel traumatized. And so we worked with this young man and we helped him come to understand that the reason he felt traumatized was because he was now carrying part of this woman's pain in his own heart. That the deepest pain of her experience had pierced his heart and opened his heart to where he was now carrying part of this pain with her. And that was transforming his experience, his whole understanding of what it means to be a man. And so that is an example of how this work works. And in fact, in the case of that young man, he actually then a year later joined our training and did the year long training and the internship and then became one of our certified facilitators delivering this work in his own communities uh, outside Johannesburg in South Africa. So that's just an example of the principle of this work, which is that one of the principles of this work is that men cannot hear the deep truth and pain of women's experience and remain the same men. And women cannot hear the deep truth of men's pain and experience and remain the same women. In fact, over and over again in our work, women come to this program and they are pretty much blown away and surprised to hear the level of men's pain and suffering. And that's because it's often been a stigma for men to share, especially in front of women but also men, as all of you know, about that pain and suffering. And so when the, their hearts open like that and women hear that men have had their own abusive situations with mothers or fathers or bullying or, or you know, partners, they just had no idea. And it's an opening that starts to happen to heal that divide. And the same is true for men. What we commonly hear in this work is that men had the data, but they didn't have a clue kind of thing. They did not realize the actual experience of women at the level that they learn it in this work. And they come away realizing, this is what's happening to my own sisters, my daughters, my wives, my wife, my mother, whatever. Men begin to realize and take in at a whole new level uh, the actual experience of women's pain and the challenge that women live through. And through this, there is a mutual alchemy that begins to take place. Because in this work, both women and men need each other to transform this gender crisis. Neither can do it on their own. And you can't fix a broken airplane by fixing only one wing. So gender harmony and equality will never really fully happen until women and men and all the gender categories in the human family come together and do this integral healing together. And that's what this work is about. So thank you for listening to us. And we'd like to um, just turn it over to Phil and then Chaya to share a little bit about themselves. And their experience in the work. Okay, thank you. So I'm Phil Viverito. I'm a member of the Mankind Project. I initiated in uh, the fall of 2005, and I'm in the uh, St. Louis community. And a special shout out to my brothers who are on the call tonight from St. Louis and also Columbia, Missouri. Glad you're with me. So um, just to tell you a little bit, uh, I initiated in 2005, and then in 2014, August of 2014, my wife said to me, a friend of hers was bringing this workshop to St. Louis for the first time with some organization called, there was no equity in it at that point, it was just Gender Reconciliation International. And it was a three day workshop and she said, would you like to go? And I said, well, what's it about? 
And she says, well, there's a flyer on the kitchen table and uh, why don't you go in there and read it, and see what you think. So I, I went in and I read the flyer, not once, but actually a couple times. And it absolutely made no sense to me whatsoever. And I told her that. And so we discussed a little bit. And at that time I was uh, working, I was on the road a lot. So just an opportunity to spend some time with my wife over the weekend, I was all for it. So I said, okay, sure. So we're driving there. It's a Friday morning. We're driving to the workshop. I say to my wife, what's this workshop about again? And she says, you know, I'm really not sure. And I said to her, I remember saying, okay, I'll tell you what, if this thing is really silly, then I'm going to want to leave. And are you willing to come with me? And she said, yeah, I'll come with you. So I had my escape plan all set up. I had my partner. She bought in with me. I was ready to go. And on the first day on Friday, within a couple hours, we did some activity. I, th I thought to myself, you must be kidding. And I remember reaching in my, uh, my, my pants pocket for my car keys and kind of jingling them around and, well, we'll stay a little longer. And then later on the next day, a couple more activities, the same result. And I kept making the decision along with my wife, we chose to stay. And so what happened was that by the time the workshop was over on Sunday, something had happened. And I was not actually ready to leave the workshop. And it's still to this day difficult to explain exactly what happened. But what I believe is that the women who were present there for that workshop gave me something, opened something up inside me that at that time, up to nine years of men's work, I never experienced. So I was grateful for the presence of the women and also the support of the men who were there too. And so for me, that's how a mankind project and men's work integrated with gender equity and reconciliation. And I'll just, I'll, I'll end it by paraphrasing a quote by Julian Devereaux, a uh, member of mankind project who said that he thinks that this work that we do is the next step beyond men's work for any man who truly wishes to heal. And I would add not just to heal, but to integrate all the parts of himself in an effort to become whole. So thank you. And pass it over to Chaya. Thank you, Phil. Hello, everyone. Um, so I am Chaya Pomula, and uh, I, I know Will and Cynthia for over 20 years. We were introduced uh, by a common friend, Sister Lucy Korean, uh, who runs the Maher Project. Um, through, you know, I was born in India and, uh, you know, the, you know, the society is pretty patriarchal and I always experienced um, um, the domination of the male gender. And uh, we always felt that that's how it is. And we were taught as children that we need to just accept the way it is. Um, but throughout my experiences and then uh, I, with my, you know, advancement in education, and my professional life, I felt that I should work towards empowering women and children. And uh, that being the focus, and after hearing what Will and Cynthia have been doing for all these years, I, um, I somehow got attracted to that work because there is a, a common interest there. Um, and because of my interest in helping women to overcome this patriarchy, and also be able to empower themselves. And their work really inspired me to engage in, uh, with, that, with that work. So, um, I, so after some time, I became a board member uh, of, on uh, Jerry. And I attended the sessions. Personally, you know, through my experience, I, I learned something completely different from, from what I actually assumed. Uh, things that were taken for granted in my entire life, I realized that there is something that can be done to change and, and transform this patriarchy. Um, one thing I experienced through the workshops is there is, they create this safe space that Cynthia was referring to earlier. 
where there is mutual trust and there is no hesitation from anyone to share their own unique stories. Um, and the, the, there are people who are listening to it and there is not even uh, any doubt or any hesitance in people to share their stories. That's the kind of mutual trust that is developed. And that also gives you the impression that, you know, the, the, I would say the confidence that it's not just you who has experienced, there are other people who have gone through similar experiences. So that puts you in a completely different uh, perspective. So you start to see things differently. We, we assume that men are always dominating. The problems are always through men. But when you listen to these stories from men, it changes your perception. So I think that was a great, great experience for me. That's what I've learned a lot from it. And through my, in my professional career, I try to bring in some of those practices. I try to, you know, you know, um, avoid these uh, gender issues at workplace. I'm not an expert, but there are things that I learned from this, which I'm able to apply in my professional life. So this is a wonderful experience. And that's something it cannot be even said in words. It has to be experienced. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak, but I would like to see this scaling up globally. I know we are already in nine countries and I wanna see this scaling up globally. And there is so much need out there and programs like this, which are action oriented. People are not just talking, preaching. There is actually action. And these are the type of programs that need to be advanced. And I wish that very soon this becomes a global program. I just want to thank you, Chaya. And um, we didn't I introduce you properly. Chaya is the founder of PAM10, which is an international IT company with 200 employees. So she has a lot of experience in taking things to scale. So we're very fortunate to have you on our board. She also founded a program for destitute children and women in India, in Hyderabad, India. So um, anyway, she also takes action and walks her talk, as does Phil. So we're very blessed by the people who have gathered around this work. And Chai is in New Jersey, operating her home in, in India from New Jersey. So <laughs> talk about superwoman. Um, we wanted to thank you, Chaya. We, and, and thank you, Phil, too. Um, before we move into our activity, we just wanted to open a little space for Ed um, to share a little bit um, about your experience, if you would, Ed. Oh, thanks, Cynthia. Yeah, um, when did I do the Jerry program? I guess it was last fall. Um, time goes quickly when you're having fun. But I had done, as most of you I think know, a great deal of work around gender, around gender partnership, et cetera. And I was kind of like Phil was. I had my hands on my keys at the beginning because I really didn't know that, uh, that there was much I knew I was going to learn, and I was dead wrong. Uh, it is an entirely different experience. Reading about, hearing about, being told about um, women's and also men's experience uh, of the gender gap, the gender conflict, than it is to actually hear people share from their hearts over a 48 hour period uh, and really get a chance to be present to that. And it, uh, it changed me, it changed my life. So thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank Beautiful. you, Ed. Beautiful to hear that testimony. Spoken. Yeah. So we're going to move into our activity. And um, before we do, part of that is making sure that we do as best a job as we can to create safe space. And we realize that most of you, if not all of you, do this you know, group process work a lot or all the time. And there may be some new people here, too, that haven't done that. So our first, we just want to go over a couple of community agreements. Um, one is confidentiality, that whatever is spoken in these groups stays in the groups. And only if it's um, something that you share personally about your own story, then you can share it. But don't share anything outside of the group that would um, 
identify anyone else in your group or don't share their story. And then the second one is um, that any sharing that we do, that it's to create safe space and also carries a healing intention. So truth can be told in many ways. And sometimes telling the truth is, brings pain and suffering um, that is intended to hurt and wound rather than intended to heal. And so as we share truth um, to do so with that in mind and that consciousness of raising it to the healing for everyone. Um, and finally, just I statements when you share. And the, a big one in this work is not to universalize. So when I share that I wouldn't say all men do X, Y, Z, you know, or all women do this, or all people that are gender fluid do this, you know. So to not universalize, to get very specific, I know some men that do this, or I know some women or some people who do this. So just mindfulness around how we speak to each other as we move into this activity. Over to you, Phil. All right, so we're going to move into an activity now. And so I'm going to ask that if you have anything in your lap or if you've got a pen in your hand or a cup of coffee or whatever, that you set that down, and that you get yourself comfortable in your chair, feet on the ground. And then I'm going to ask you to either close your eyes or take a soft gaze to the floor, whichever one you want to do. So either close your eyes or take a soft gaze to the floor and get in touch with your breathing. And follow your breath all the way to a quiet place within yourself. And in a moment, I'm going to ask a question that you will each have an opportunity to answer. And this is a time to practice deep listening and mindful speaking, both essential practices in our gender work. Deep listening means that when your partner is speaking, you set aside your own thoughts and agenda and responses, and you truly open and listen fully to receive the other person's communication, including not only their words, but also the emotional effect, the body language. And such caring and attentive listening on your part will create an open-hearted field of presence and it'll tend to draw out a deep, fully authentic communication from your partner. And then when it's your time to speak, your partner will provide the same quality of listening for you, which will be a support and kind for you to share yourself more fully. Another way of just saying that to the men of MKP is men practice wholehearted warrior listening. Listen, observe, verify, and empathize. Practice love. So in a few moments, you're going to be moving into breakout rooms with three other participants. And when you arrive in that breakout space, I invite you to introduce yourself to the other three people there in the room with you. And each person will have about one and a half minutes to speak. So you'll need to decide who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and so on. So each person having a minute and a half to speak will give a total of six minutes to that room. And in about oh, say 30 seconds before the time is completely up, you'll get a pop-up message giving you a warning to bring things to a closure and to thank each other for your participation before we bring you back into the whole group again. All right. So once again, with your eyes closed or a soft gaze to the floor, I'm going to pose a question for your consideration. We invite you to speak to when you get into the breakout room. And the question is this, as a boy or a young man, what did you learn from your mother or other female authority figures about girls 
and women. Female authority figures would be female siblings, your cousins, your aunts, grandmothers, teachers. So as a boy or a young man, what did you learn from your mother or other female authority figures about girls and women? And if you are a woman, as a girl or young woman, what did you learn from your father or other male authority figures about boys and men? And when we're speaking about male authority figures, once again, we're speaking of male siblings, cousins, uncles, grandfathers, teachers, etc. So to repeat that question again, as a girl or young woman, what did you learn from your father or other male authority figures about boys and men? I'm and going to invite you then. Um, Bill, I'm just going to add one piece. If you identify as gender fluid or gender neutral, then what, what did you learn about your, you know, about other gender identities? If that fits better than getting into the binary, then go there with the question. From your parental figures. So from your parental figures, what did you learn about gender and gender identity and expression? And also just to add that this will be in small groups and so this will not be recorded. Yeah. So there'll be no recording made so you can rest assured that these groups are completely confidential. Thanks for the interjection there, Bill. So we, we invite you to open your eyes and uh, ask for your patience as we move you into a breakout room with three other participants. I think everyone's probably back now. So let's just uh, take a few deep breaths together. And as we do, maybe wiggle your toes, move your arms and legs around because we like movement. Stretch, we've been listening to all these people talk. Oh uh, yeah, get the body going and watch the candle yeah. behind you, Will. But um, the heart, you know, move that those shoulders back, roll them so your heart opens even more <sighs> because we're gonna do a little visioning in the next question. And doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Come on, folks. <laughs> there we go. We, we do movement in our courses, and we even sing. I don't know if MKP guys sing. Do you sing? No? Not much singing going on. Bad, bad, badly for the most part. We dance. We I dance. can't tell you. Thank you. <laughs> we sing badly but devotedly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No qualifiers here. So I just invite you again to have a soft gaze or if you are comfortable to close your eyes, just settle into your heart again. Breathe into that space of your heart as I introduce the next question. The question is, what is your vision for a gender healed world? Just keeping your eyes closed Imagine what a fully healed society would look like. What would it feel like? How would it be to wake up each morning and walk out on the streets? How would a gender healed world feel in your family, at your workplace or at school? How would your relationships with your partner be? Your daughter or son? Your partner or sisters or brothers? Just take a moment and imagine this, dream this, letting go of any negative thoughts that say it's impossible, how could this be? Just let your mind vision the unimaginable for a moment. And keeping your eyes closed, I'll just tell you the process again, which is the same. However, this time, well, you'll be moved into the same group of four, and each person will have two minutes to share. And again, the prompts will come up in the screen of the computer. 
And again, just that deep listening. So this is not an engaged conversation. It's just really taking in the visions of each of the people in your group. And then there will be a prompt in the window of your computer telling you it's the next person's turn to go. So what is your vision of a gender healed world? What would that feel like and be like in your life? And now we'll move into the groups. And just one last thing. And as you finish that, just be sure to thank each other for those for gratitude and appreciation. Here we go. See you soon. So I'm going to invite you once again to either close your eyes or take a soft gaze to the floor. And just take a brief moment here to give a silent, it's gonna be a silent one, a silent blessing to the other people that were in your small group for the visions that they shared with you to become manifest. And then as you send these blessings to each person in your group, take a moment to open your heart and receive the blessings that are being sent to you as you hold your own vision of a gender heal world in your heart and support the vision of those who shared with you today. And just giving gratitude for this time together, we thank you for your participation. And that's just a very, very, very small taste of what this work is like. If you can imagine having more women in the group because often we have pretty balanced numbers in our programs of, um, of between men and women. And then of course, people who identify outside the binary. And by the way, we'll be speaking more about some upcoming programs, but we do have a, um, some um, special programs. One is coming up for LGBT, LGBTQI plus folks and communities. And then we'll have a Spanish speaking course and a young adult course along with our general courses and one in Hindi as well. Um, so we'll give you some more information about that in just a moment. And, but we want to open it up for just some, oh, right, Garrett, go ahead. Well, we just <laughs> wanted to invite Garrett, who's one of our young upcoming leaders in this work, just to say a few words about your experience of the work, Garrett and what keeps you engaged with this And Garrett was mission. helping with the, uh, the facilitation of the breakout rooms. So um, maybe if you could highlight yourself, spotlight yourself, Garrett, there you go. Thank you. Great, so, so hi everyone, I'm Garrett. And just very briefly, what has, I mean, I think in a way the profound gift of this work for me has been to be able to sit in circle with women and hear their stories and hear stories I had never, never heard before. And that has, I, I do feel that has, that has opened me to, to, to something new that, that I didn't even really know I was missing. And similarly to, to share, to share some of my own stories in the presence of women and, and have that be heard and received. It's just been a, a profound gift and I think has has opened up opened up dimensions of, of my own being in a way that has uh, lightened lightened me um, in a way that's been uh, <laughs> quite beautiful so thank you all for for being here today and for uh, taking a, a taste of this yourself So we have, uh, I think we're now needing to wrap up. We have two, we do have two upcoming programs, FYI. This, it's a six week program that runs for two hour sessions on Zoom weekly. One of them starts on Thursday evening and will be on Thursday evenings for six weeks. And the other one starts next Monday in the morning. And that will also run for six weeks. Garrett's putting the link in the chat box. So if any of you are interested in that, there's a few spots left in both of those programs. 
and um, would love to welcome you to experience this work in its online form in either of those programs. We also want to say that if anything has been stirred in you, um, that's, you know, just kind of stirred up that Will and I, Phil, um, Garrett, and Chaya too are available if, um, if you want to reach out to us and, and just talk a little bit more. We say this work is um, not therapy, but it's therapeutic. And so sometimes things can get stirred up that need a little bit more processing. So we want to thank you all for inviting us. Thank you to Paul and John and Ed and Boisen, and Boisen for inviting us to do this uh, front porch conversation with you. As Cynthia said, we're available for questions or any further information that anyone might wish to know about our work. I think Garrett put the chat line up. And what a blessing to be with you in this Zoom porch. And I think we're turning it back to Paul, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Thanks, you guys, very, very much. I appreciate uh, what you gave to me this evening. And those of you who were in the audience, I hope that you reached uh, some places of, of a real depth and understanding and were moved in some way by what happened. And I hope that the possibility of what you put out uh, as how we could imagine the world would be, um, will be something that we can all um, make happen in the world. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Brian's the, the uh, chair elect who's also part of putting this together. So thanks to Brian for for his work as well. I do want to give a special thanks to Chaya, um, Phil, um, and Garrett. Uh, Garrett, thanks for the work that you did on the breakout groups. Appreciate that. And um, so thank you. Uh, and Will and Cynthia, of course, who, who lead us along the way. So uh, Brian, please share with us what's next. Thank you, Paul. So um, tomorrow night, um, uh, we will have our next, uh, it'll be the eighth town hall meeting. Um, it'll be at seven o'clock central, uh, eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Pacific time, uh, where we'll bring you up to date on some of the updates on the project, um, some exciting information about curriculum updates that uh, uh, new trainings that are coming online. Um, and some update on uh, financial information as well. So uh, we hope you can join us. Uh, there'll be an email uh, coming out shortly with the Zoom link uh, for that meeting. Again, that's uh, tomorrow night at uh, seven o'clock central. Um, and with that, uh, I'll turn it back to Ed, I believe. Ed, yes. Ed, we have one question that popped up. We just wanted to respond to, if we may, real quickly. Sure, go ahead. It was just in chat. There was a question whether we encourage uh, married couples to do this work and or the partners answer, or partners. And the answer is absolutely. We off. It's not formally couples' work, but couples find it very beneficial, and so we welcome that. Uh, we have many couples who do this work, and it works very well. So the answer is yes. And I'll just add that. For any of you, if you have trepidation um, in your hearts about coming into circle or conversation with women, what I can say is the women are waiting. The women <laughs> are waiting for you to be in conversation with you. So know that you are warmly welcomed. It doesn't mean the conversation doesn't get um, deep, but you guys like that. And I know that. And so they can meet you there. And we don't do mail bashing. I meant to mention that. There's no mail bashing in this work. So it's really about constructive conversation. And also, by the way, not just partners, but some, we've often had very beautiful father-daughter or mother-son combinations. That Garrett's father siblings. came with him. My son has done the work. My mother so, brought me. So yeah. You know, I, I think it's great. I think it's great the enthusiasm <laughs> for your work. I want you. I want you to know I share it. And uh, for all of us. Uh, Will and Cynthia, thank you. Um, not just for the, the past hour, but for all the work you do. For, for those of you who don't know it on the call, Gender Equity and Reconciliation, what we, we call it, Jerry, is a full partner with MKP 
uh, and has been for a long time. Many of us in leadership have done their programs and I've yet to meet anybody that doesn't give them the highest recommendation. It's a perfect complement to the work, the men's work that we do in our circles. And I would encourage you all to do it. Um, that said, uh, thanks to all of you. And um, we will see you on the next front porch, which will be announced. Thanks to all of you for, for being here. <laughs>